Hey everyone, my name is Matthew, and today we're going to be going over how to find a relationship between pressure, temperature, and altitude. So essentially what we're doing is we're finding a function for pressure in terms of Z, which is going to be our altitude component, and a function for temperature as well as in terms of Z. So we're going to use six very important equations. We're going to make a couple assumptions, and I'll list those out as we get to them. But to start out with, we have our equation for internal energy. The change of it is equal to the any change in heat added to the system, and then subtracting P dV pressure times change in volume. Ideal gas law. We have an equation from statics, which is the changing of pressure with respect to Z or height or altitude component is equal to negative rho times g, rho being the density, g being the gravitational force or acceleration. We have Cv, the heat capacity comes to volume, and that's equal to the changing of heat out of the system with respect to pressure. We have the heat capacity constant pressure is equal to the heat capacity constant volume plus ideal gas constant. And then we have this equation when we're dealing with ideal gases, we know that the changing of internal energy is going to be equal to the heat capacity constant volume times any change of temperature. So first, I'm going to find the relationship between temperature and pressure. And then from then on, we'll find a relationship between pressure and altitude. And then we'll take those two relationships, find a third relationship, and we'll have the equations that we have that we uh, can use to describe how pressure, temperature, and altitude are related. So, first off, temperature and pressure relationship. We'll start out with this equation: changing of internal energy is equal to any small amount of heat minus pressure changing the volume. Now, this is where we're going to make our first assumption. We're going to assume that the atmosphere that we're working with is going to be adiabatic. So, Q is equal to zero. No heat is put in or out of the system. So, zero, we have changing of internal energy is equal to negative PDV. And from here, we'll go ahead and use this equation. We're assuming we're working with ideal gases or treating the atmosphere as an ideal gas. So we'll say that du, changing of internal energy, is equal to the heat capacity constant volume times any changing in temperature. So dv t. And we have dv here. We're going to take an integral here in a second. So we're just going to go ahead and substitute in uh, RT over V here, so we're working with a temperature variable rather than a pressure variable, or sorry, a volume variable and a temperature variable rather than a pressure variable. So we'll have negative RT over V dV. Again, we'll go ahead and manipulate this just to make solving an integral much easier. CV times whatever temperature dt is equal to negative r times whatever volume times the changing of volume. Now, from here, if we take the integral with respect to temperature on this side and the integral with respect to volume on this side, we know that cv, e capacity, constant volume, and r, the gas constant, don't change. So we can take those out we get our integrals that are very easy to solve. We run from here again, very easy to solve. The peak capacity constant volume, natural log. T2 over T1 is equal to 
negative r natural log of b2 over b1. Now from here, we know that we can just manipulate these two values here and relate the two natural logs in this way. And of course, here we can see that b2 over t1 is equal to b2 over v1 to the power of negative r over cb. And I'm going to take this up here. And we don't want a relationship between temperature and volume. We want a temperature and pressure relationship. So we'll go ahead and substitute in the volume. We'll substitute in RT over P for the volumes. And after evaluating that and canceling out like terms, we get the following. T2 over T1 is equal to T2 over T1 times P1 over P2 all to the power of negative r over cd, that same exponent down here. And from here, we'll go ahead and combine like terms. t2 over t1 is going to be equal to, or sorry, t2 over t1 to the power of r over cd plus 1 is equal to p2 over p1 to the power of r over cv. Now, these exponents aren't easy to work with, so real quick, I'll go out over here and we're going to name, we're just going to simplify these to equate or these two exponents by naming a new variable. So, we're going to use this equation down here. So, r is equal to cp minus cv r over cv right here is equal to cp minus cv over cv r over cv plus 1 is equal to cp over cv and then we'll go ahead and call cp over cv alpha so now we'll just call this alpha and this alpha minus 1 And then from here, we can do more simple algebra. P2 over P1, alpha minus 1 over alpha. And again, we want a relationship between, we know the net initial temperature, we want a relationship between a new temperature and pressure variables. So we want to solve for T2, this new temperature here. We can just go ahead and move T1 over here. And we have our complete equation relating temperature and pressure being equal to T2 is equal to T1 times pressure to or divided by the initial temp pressure all to the power of alpha minus one over alpha, where alpha is equal to C P over C. So this is our equation that relates the temperature with two different pressures, the initial pressure and a new pressure. And we also have a initial temperature right one here. And so the only unknown here is this new pressure. So what we want to do is find how the pressure varies with a changing of altitude. So now we're going to find a relationship between pressure and altitude, and then we'll relate that equation that we find with this equation here. And we'll have all of our relationships. So I'm going to go ahead and erase the board real quick. 
uh, keep our important equations, and then I'll be right back and we'll find that new relationship between pressure and altitude. All right, so now we're going to relate pressure with altitude, and we're going to start with this equation here from statics. So we'll go ahead and the relationship or the changing of pressure with respect to altitude z here is equal to negative rho times gravity. Now, negative rho, rho, again, is just the density. So we know that the density can be written from, or can be derived from the ideal gas law here is defined in this way. We have rho, the density being equal to molar mass times pressure divided by the ideal gas constant times temperature. And so we can go ahead and substitute this in there. So we have the changing of pressure with respect to altitude is equal to negative molar mass times pressure divided by ideal gas constant times the temperature and then all times force of gravity. Now, from here, we're going to go ahead and bring all of the terms that are changing over to this side, and then all the terms that aren't changing, well, all the terms that aren't changing are just going to stay over here. And then we'll also bring this dz variable over here. It'll be much easier to solve for dz. And then solving for the changing of pressure will actually be pretty easy, too. So we'll take, just do some algebra. We have the temperature over pressure times changing of pressure is going to be equal to the negative molar mass divided by uh, the ideal gas constant times gravity times the changing of the altitude. So from here, we know that none of these three are changing. And so this integral will be pretty simple. But this one is a little more complicated. But what we're going to do is actually take, we're going to substitute in here, this equation up here that we solved in that first part of the video that we just did. So this is essentially what we solved for is a temperature function in terms of pressure. And T2 is equal to T1 times P2 over P1, and then all to the power of alpha minus 1 over alpha. So we'll substitute this in our temperature here. We'll take the integral. This over here. So we have T1 pressure 2 over pressure 1, alpha minus 1 over alpha, divided by pressure, strength pressure, P1 and P2. This, and then again, we're going to take the integral of this whole side. None of this is changing. We're taking it from Z1 to Z2. So all this is going to end up becoming is negative molar mass times gravity divided by R times the changing in altitude. So Molar mass, gravity, changing of altitude, divided by r. Now, what can we do with this side? It looks complicated, but we can take t1 and p1 out because those are the initial values. We already know those. Take those out. And then we're going to be left with p2 over p. And p2 has this exponent. And I'll go ahead and move this all over here. So, you're going to end up getting T1, P1 to the power of the minus alpha over alpha. And then you have your integral. And you still have this P2 to this exponent divided by P. We can simplify that by just putting P to the alpha minus 1 over alpha minus 1. 
respect to pressure, that's equal to there's a change molar mass times gravity times change in altitude divided by the gas constant. We'll move these constants over here. We'll solve. We'll evaluate the integral. So we will have one over alpha minus one over alpha times the quantity R B uh, P two minus P one to the power of alpha minus one over alpha. And then on the right side, we move these over here. So we have negative molar mass times the gravity times the changing of the altitude divided by T1 and R, so the gas constant and initial temperature, dividing by this, which is the same as multiplying by the pressure of alpha minus 1 over alpha, or pressure to the x1 of alpha minus 1 over alpha. And from here, we can multiply this over here. We'll actually have like terms. Go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll have P2 that alpha minus 1 over alpha minus P1 alpha minus 2 over alpha is equal to alpha minus 1 over alpha. And then this whole right side. Now we have like terms, so what we can do is combine them. We'll have P P2 to the power of alpha minus one over alpha is equal to P1 to the power of alpha minus one over alpha times the quantity of one minus product of the molar mass, gravity, and change of altitude divided by the gas constant and initial temperature times times alpha minus one over alpha. So now we have P2 to the power of alpha minus 1 over alpha is equal to P1 to the power of alpha minus 1 over alpha times the quantity of 1 minus this term here, which is the molar mass times the gravity times the changing of altitude divided by the product of the gas constant and initial temperature. And then that term is all multiplied by alpha minus 1 over alpha. Now, if we want to solve for P2, we know that P2 is just going to be equal to P1 times the quantity 1 minus molar mass times the gravity times the changing of altitude divided by gas constant, initial temperature times alpha minus one over alpha. And it will all be to the power of alpha over alpha minus one. So this here is our second relationship that we needed. We have our equation for P2 and it has a lot of different variables in it, but the only one that's changing is that change in altitude. Everything else in that equation is constant and known. And so we now have our equation of pressure terms in terms of altitude. So now we have our relationship between altitude and pressure. Again, I'm gonna erase the board real quick and then I'm going to make the relationship between this equation and this equation up here and then we'll be able to understand the true relationship between pressure, altitude, and temperature. All right, so here in this third part, we're just gonna go ahead and find our temperature equation in terms of altitude. 
So we've already found the temperature equation in terms of pressure, as well as the pressure equation in terms of altitude. Now we need to relate the temperature with altitude rather than just the temperature with the pressure. So what we can do is we can take that first equation we defined up here, and we can substitute in P2 to the numerator of that equation. And so that's going to look like this. P2 is equal to T1 times P2, we're going to substitute in this P2 here for that P2. So the numerator is P1 times the quantity 1 minus the product of the molar mass, gravity, and changing the altitude divided by the product of the gas constant times the initial temperature and then I'm also multiplied by alpha minus 1 over alpha and that whole quantity right here is to the power of alpha over alpha minus 1. Now that whole numerator is simply over P1 so P1, and then that is all to the power of alpha minus 1 over alpha. So P1's canceled, the exponents canceled, and we'll just have T2 being equal to T1 times this quantity of 1 minus more mass times the gravity and changing of altitude divided by the product of the gas constant and initial temperature times alpha minus 1 over alpha and that's it. So this is our equation for temperature in terms of altitude given an initial temperature and molar mass and of course the gravity, and the force of gravity. So this right here is essentially a function of temperature in terms of altitude. So now we have found our equation for the relationship between temperature and altitude. We've also found the equation for pressure and altitude, and the equation for the relationship between temperature and pressure. And so using these three equations, we can easily describe how the temperature and pressure and or how the temperature and pressure change through our atmosphere as you go up and down in altitude. Thank you for watching.